This tree was purchased by one of my customers uh, after I'd imported it from Japan and uh, part of the deal was that I would also do the first styling, the first bit of work on the tree before delivering it to him. Uh, so that is the, the scope of the work that I'm going to be doing today. But obviously um, I can't see what's happening in the structure of the tree until the leaves have been removed. So the first course of action will be to uh, defoliate the tree and uh, then we can see inside and then then we can reassess what work will need to be done. When you're defoliating a tree like this, there's essentially three uh, tools or methods that you can use. Uh, the one that is available is a defoliation shears, uh, which is my personal preference. Uh, essentially, it's it's a uh, it's very similar to something that the ladies use for. Um, or that's used in the sewing industry to cut threads. Uh, it's just very much longer, so it has a longer reach. Um, and then the, the way that the tool is manufactured with the metal being bent at the back uh, uh, means that the tool opens and closes, well, it opens of its, uh, of its own, um, and obviously you are then just pushing it down. So it's a little bit lighter on your fingers. Um, the other option is to use a pair of trimming scissors. Uh, trimming scissors and not general purpose scissors because the trimming scissors has a very much narrower or slender neck uh, so you're able to get into the canopy of the tree a lot easier. But you can also use uh, your fingers and just strip the leaves off. Uh, on branches uh, like escape branches uh, or, or uh, sacrificial branches it's not too much of a problem or too much of a concern if you if you remove some of the buds at the base of the this leaf stalk um, but I would uh, so for those branches that you know either that you're going to remove or where you're not going to require the the, the, the complete branch um, there you can just defoliate by stripping the leaves off uh, but branches uh, that are in the structure of the tree that you're going to keep it is advisable to rather cut those leaves off because if you pull the leaf out and it pulls the dormant bud at the base out as well it means that you will never have the opportunity of buds uh, or uh, little branchlets developing from from that point to strip leaves off you basically just I hold the base of the branch quite firmly and then using your thumb and forefinger you loosely just strip the leaves off and as you can see uh, most of the time well in every one of these instances the leaf stalk has remained so these buds that are in, on the uh, at the base of the leaf stalk protected by the leaf stalk itself uh, will still be able to develop um, in the future if we wanted it to so this is the end of this branch and uh, what I want to show you here is that if you want to keep this branch developing as a sacrifice, say for instance you're using this branch to thicken up at the bottom or at the base uh, where it's coming out or for whatever reason you're wanting to, to keep the sacrifice and we can maybe discuss that a little bit later. Um, the point is that you, you want to defoliate a branch like this because it allows uh, light into the tree and obviously our objective is also just to remove leaves so that we can see into the structure to help us to style it or to work on the tree. Uh, but at the moment I don't know whether this branch is going to be kept or removed. Very often when you have this kind of growth on trident maples you'll actually just cut it out. Um, but because we've not worked on this tree before I need to see what, uh, what changes need to be made and maybe these branches can be used for some to, to help to achieve some of those goals um, and so the point I want to make is that you don't want to cut the tip of this branch because what will happen then is the auxins will be redistributed and you'll have back budding forming on the branch and uh, what you're actually wanting is branch extension. Uh, if you have branch extension that's when you're going to have the maximum amount of thickening on the branch. Uh, so what I normally would do then is I would just keep the last four or so leaves and not remove the tip of the branch and then this branch will con happily continue to to grow. 
Now the other, the other method that I mentioned that you could use is a trimming scissors. And yeah, you're going to, it doesn't really matter where you cut the leaf stalk itself, uh, but I do like to keep it quite long. Uh, the sap will then also recede out of this and this leaf stalk will dry up and fall off of its own accord. But as you can see, if you're having to uh, manually cut off each branch uh, with the scissors, it will take a little bit longer, certainly than the, than the the, just the leaf stripping method but you can't apply that uh, method in all cases so in a case like this uh, or yeah where I'm doing I'm doing this this would be used uh, with the trimming scissors typically where you are um, wanting to make absolutely certain that you don't damage the dormant bud in case you're wanting to use it to contribute to the structure of the tree and then finally just to demonstrate the use of a uh, defoliation shears is uh, just cutting um, the leaves off as you would the scissors but just it's it's a slightly different tool so again you're leaving a little bit of the leaf stalk and um, the, the, the tool allows you to, to reach quite quite far obviously it depends on which defoliation shears you have um, and then uh, that aids being able to get into the structure. Uh, a couple of tips of uh, related to defoliating, always uh, start at the top of the tree in that way that as the leaves fall they fall to the lower branches and as you're working down uh, you'll remove those leaves and then finally when you're done defoliating the entire tree you'll have no leaves. If you start from the bottom uh, and you work up it's, it's a, lot more, a lot more messy. The leaves are now being removed and one can clearly see into the, t into the tree, into the structure of the tree and, um, and w which is so often the case that when you remove the leaves of deciduous trees and you can view the structure then the tree doesn't look as uh, technically correct or as uh, wonderful as you might have thought it would be um, in terms of uh, structural uh, issues. and. Um, and this tree is unfortunately no exception, uh, but it is a stunning tree. It uh, clearly, uh, clearly has seen uh, a good number of years of, of development. I'm guessing 30 odd years of, uh, of growth as a bonsai tree um, based on the exfoliation of the bark, the coloration, uh, the way that uh, scars have healed over this kind of wart-like appearance and um, so I think before I start uh, any work on the tree I just first want to go through the tree point out some of the problems uh, some of the things that I really enjoy about the tree uh, so some nice nice surprises some unpleasant surprises so we're going to look at that first so having turned the tree around a number of times and viewed it from different angles uh, I think it is a great uh, perspective or angle that has been chosen as the front of the tree there might be some um, other views that could be considered. Uh, it's always interesting for me um, to see front br branches growing towards the front. And uh, if you look at uh, the old, older books um, uh, and you, you, you familiarize yourself with these so-called rules or guidelines, whatever you want to call them, they will talk about not having branches towards the front of the tree. And um, this is something that is actually invaluable when you're planning on displaying your trees uh, in winter when they are leafless uh, because you need branches coming to the front of the trunk as well to give you the volume. If you only have branches on the side and at the back until you get to the upper reaches of the tree this is going to be very empty. Um, so I think this person um, it's great that there are these branches coming towards the front. Um, 
so there is that foundation on which to build uh, which of course I will build onto and add to over the years uh, but there are a number of uh, issues uh, a lot of the branches in my in my opinion are too thin uh, at the base of the branch uh, to to give you a pleasing step from the trunk to the primary branch um, and, and essentially this is typical of something that's being rushed. So what I would have done is have grown these branches out a lot longer, for longer, uh, so that they gain more girth at the, at the trunk uh, and then taper it down as it gets to the profile of the tree. Uh, so that hasn't been done and at this point in time uh, um, I, I certainly wouldn't want to cut off all the branches and sort of develop them again um, but we have kept these whips so we can use those to accelerate sap flow into those branches and obviously the the branch will thicken of course the whole entire branch will thicken and um, we won't be able to keep a little uh, it'll be difficult to keep secondary and tertiary branches a, a delicate if a, a while doing that at the same time so it's to try and find a balance I would say trident maples are vigorous growers and so what is very common is that you will find multiple shoots uh, buds forming at a particular point and if it's not controlled, in other words, those buds or excess buds eliminated, whether it be with your fingertip or when they're a little bit older with a pair of scissors, but if they are allowed to develop uh, for any given length of time, they do start to form knobs uh, or fists and uh, the, the growth is quite coarse and then you obviously get a reverse taper occurring as well. Um, this also happens when you know as, 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 as you've got a tree or if you have a tree that has been developed to a certain point um, but you're not controlling the growth correctly uh, and then you have say in spring you have excessively long internodes that form uh, and and then instead of um, instead of con preventing that by you know not fertilizing and accelerating that uh, for instance one that, that would be one of the uh, actions that would lead to uh, excessively long internodes um, then and you don't cut that back uh, so or when you cut it back and you and then you can do that once or twice uh, without too much of a problem but when you start getting into the third and fourth and fifth time uh, what happens then is it starts making ma making that knuckle um, and and so then you have to cut back beyond that point so what you'll find is on this tree in several places uh, 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 superfluous growth has been allowed to remain on the tree for too long or alternatively it was allowed to develop and then cut back multiple times um, either way we end we've ended up up with some fairly coarse uh, areas which will need to be thinned out um, and I might not be able to do all of that uh, sort of clean up work today um, because otherwise you're going to be sitting with too large a scar and uh, so probably do that in stages. Um, the other thing that uh, I noticed on this tree is that it's in, in you have phenomenal taper from the base of the tree up into this area yeah but then after from from this point up to the apex it kind of gets lost um, so there's no taper and in fact at one point there is reverse taper um, this area yeah where my hand is is thicker than the area where it is now um, so I'm not quite sure what the artist had in mind there uh, because if you look at the um, side branches you'll see or the back branches you'll see that the profile of the tree um, has been designed um, with this uh, overall height in mind to me it feels like the tree was allowed to develop uh, too long and um, I'm not sure so there's a number of ways uh, to go about fixing that uh, one could uh, approach or thread graft more branches in this area and allow those to thicken up and then obviously they will thicken up the area below them due to the sap that's flowing into those branches uh, alternatively you can um, we could prune 
the reduce the height of the tree and obviously when you reduce the height of a tree say down to this branch yeah the the um, heaviness the taper will be enhanced so it's some it's somewhat this additional height somewhat dilutes the effect of this uh, beautiful uh, powerful trunk um, and you would be able to enhance the trunk again so pull reel that back in again by reducing the overall height now there is a little branch in this position which can be then used as the future trunk line for the apex which is great alternatively we could use one of these uh, um, whips and uh, approach graft it into position and uh, then once it's fused to then cut the tree back um, rather than just cutting this off, I think one could use this, uh, make an attempt at least to air layer it and, and you might get a nice little uh, shohin size tree from there. Um, so that's, that's a consideration. I'm not sure how much or, or what all I'm going to do today and also obviously uh, for air layering there are specific seasons that you want to do that in to increase your chance of uh, success. So at the moment I'm doing this work in uh, late summer. Um, part of the reason for that is that the tree was imported uh, a few months ago. Well, it, it, it actually left Japan um, a number of months ago, arrived, and uh, so now it, it came out of the cold environment and it's uh, leafed out. And I then decided that it would be best then to give it the first styling once those leaves had become uh, had had hardened off. However, there is still enough uh, or sufficient time for uh, growth that um, uh, is initiated by this work today to still come out and harden off. And also because uh, where a lot of people are very concerned about very late growth, uh, I think that where I am in Cape Town, South Africa, there isn't too much of a problem with a growth that goes into winter that hasn't perhaps fully hardened off. Um, although I'm, I'm not saying suggesting that this growth will not be, but I'm just saying that I'm not concerned about it because we don't really get very cold. Uh, the, we certainly never get anywhere near freezing. And uh, so I don't believe um, that growth is at risk of being killed by uh, very cold temperatures. Temperatures. So I'm not concerned about that. It's more about whether it would be more successful to do the air layering in late um, in late spring, uh, early summer, so later this year, or alternatively just to wait a couple more weeks until it's proper autumn, and then to to do the air layering. But I think it would be a good idea to to reduce this because I I think. The first uh, course of action that I mentioned of uh, using uh, approach grafts or thread grafts uh, and using that to thicken up this tree um, is, is not really going to uh, give us um, the effect that we want. Something else that you need to consider when you're making decisions on a piece of material like this is that it's very tempting to make decisions based on uh, a, a very short-term goal or very short-term rewards so what you want the tree to look like in two three four five years time uh, but you should be considering what is good for the tree in the long term uh, and not thinking I don't want to say selfishly but not yeah to an extent selfishly thinking of what you can achieve in a, a very short space of time because the tree is possibly most possibly going to outlive you and uh, if it only really excels or comes to itself um, after you have left it um, putting it politely um, that's fine because it's 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 about the tree so it's not about you basically um, and so some of the decisions that I need to make today especially for myself because it's not my tree it's a customer's tree so I need to find a balance between uh, what is best for the tree uh, what is good for uh, short-term long-term goals and also what is going to be uh, uh, what the customer will be happy with doing as well because I certainly wouldn't uh, want to do anything terribly drastic to the tree not to suggest that it is needed for it um, but um, 
I need to make these, uh, I need to consider all these, all these decisions. So there's also an area here, which was possibly uh, used um, when the tree was more than most likely developed in the ground, in the field. And uh, this uh, hole here is as a result of some uh, branch or something that was cut off. It has already healed uh, quite, quite considerably, um, but there is some rotting wood, slightly rotted wood on the inside. So I'd need to clean that out and fill that up and just get that to, to start or continue healing. Um, so that's one of the things that I need to do now. And then also I'm just going to go through the tree and eliminate uh, branches that are growing at uh, obtuse sort of angles. Um, uh, or acute angles rather 90 degrees and and where where the angle is 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 really not sympathetic or gentle to to so we're talking about uh, primary uh, and secondary branches so secondary branches coming off at um, you know at a 90 90 degree angle you you want to go with more gentle sort of departure angles so I'll be looking at uh, at that because at this point in time it's not going to be possible to bend most of these branches normally when the trident maple branch gets to about three years old uh, maybe even sooner just depends but roughly two three years old and um, they become too brittle and you won't be able to bend it it's very likely to snap and then that branch, even if it does heal, because obviously they do, um, trident maples have it, uh, have, do, do heal very easily. But even if it does heal, um, it's still going to be a weak uh, spot in the branch. And anytime you bend uh, or want to bend it in the future or do something there, it's, it's always going to be the weak point. Um, and so really your only option is to uh, prune it out and uh, replace it with new, with new growth. So what I'm doing first is uh, just to eliminate uh, unwanted growth and uh, so obviously when you're building ramification uh, you are going to start with a reasonable internode uh, before you get your first fork in the branch and then every uh, successive fork will be shorter and shorter the distance between them um, but starting with ramification or all these little uh, branches that you see on on, on here currently is, uh, is, is a problem. Um, there needs to be some reasonable spacing and also uh, for many of them there's multiple branches coming out at the same at the same point. But this particular branch here is coming is um, the, 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 the movement of the primary branch is very nice but then suddenly you have this forking off at 90 degrees. Um, so in my opinion um, that is a branch that has to go and uh, so we can cut that out and then we have a more pleasing um, structure and also this has uh, this is this has more of a future because you're going to be able to uh, develop branches secondary branches into the space going forward out to the profile of the tree and uh, be able to build your ramification on that but this uh, this branch that was there growing out is going to bump into this branch here um, so that's no good so where you have choices to make um, where you need to prune things out you always want to look at what the tree is doing in that position in that area so before and, and to help you with making that pruning decision so yeah we have an area where this is too congested um, this is never going to work in the long run so you've got two branches running in parallel to one another so I need to remove one of them so how to choose between them you can clearly see this branch is where the tree is pushing its growth so it's a more vigorous branch and the other branch the the, the growth is a lot weaker and so that will guide my choice and meaning that I will then prune this branch out and work with the stronger branch the branch where the tree is clearly wanting to grow and now of course this branch can gain in girth a lot and um, and it can be developed wider where that branch running in parallel uh, would it mean that eventually it would probably want to fuse because there's not enough space for it to develop into. So I'm just going to make some further cuts just to neaten up this branch. Uh, so I mean pruning out little stubs 
of branches that that were growing there at some time ago uh, also just things that just a bit of neatening up and uh, that we can get callus forming and just closing up smoothening off those rough prune Normally I would say that this angle is a bit steep here and it is fairly steep but the branch is still very thin and uh, so over time as this thickens this curve is going to disappear um, so it's going to become a lot smoother as the branch girth expands so that's fine I'm going to keep that uh, um, the alternative obviously would be to cut it back beyond this point but that's quite far so we'll just leave this and develop it from this point and so now we need to just clean up these cuts and seal them so it's a good idea just to clean the cuts so that you've got a nice crisp edge on which to for the healing to to take place um, especially when when you're using a branch cutter it uh, it can uh, it can leave you with a less than ideal cut I'm just using a grafting knife you could use a blade if you wanted to um, and this will give me a nice crisp edge and, uh, uh, and then I will apply a sealer over that. Next step is to apply a tree seal. I know some people I've heard of people using wood glue and other uh, solutions. Um, I'm not sure about that. Um, I use a tree sealer um, because it's developed for this purpose and um, I particularly like this little Japanese sealer. I think, I believe it's just a liquid version of the putty uh, type. And uh, what's great is that it's got a very nice, um, you can direct the, the, the paste or the sealer exactly where you want it. Um, so you can seal nice small, um, small cuts uh, with precision and uh, what's nice about this sealer as well is that it'll remain on it forms quite a hard crust and then as the callus forms underneath it it just basically pops off so when you have a cavity like this you need to remember that uh, callus will never form on rotting or unsound uh, or uh, decaying wood so you need to just scrape out the dead wood get it back to sound wood. So I've decided that uh, the, hot, the cavity was too big uh, to, um, to just put sealer over and so I'm going to fill it with uh, fast anchoring cement called Rockset and uh, if you want to know more about the product I have mentioned it in numerous other videos um, where it is used as a uh, quick drying solution to fill cavities which can which then form a good basis on which uh, a callus can can form so I'm just filling this hole with the cement and then I'll allow it to dry slightly before I can finish shaping it so when if you uh, mix it to a very stiff consistency you can then uh, just roughly shape it and then give it five to ten minutes and then you can shape it further uh, just to uh, because it becomes a little bit harder and uh, then will hold its shape that you give it much easier than right now so let's just give it a few more, more minutes to, to uh, set and then uh, I'll do the final shaping. The cement has now been allowed sufficient time to completely dry and um, now I'm just going to expose the cambium which is the green layer just below the bark um, around the edge of the cement 
and uh, the, the reason why you do that is just to initiate uh, the healing um, on the edge and um, we're going to seal this immediately afterwards because that will ensure that that tissue stays moist and it needs to remain moist in order for it to to flow I'm just using a gin tool uh, but again you can use a, a grafting knife or a blade uh, to achieve a very similar objective. Now you'll also notice that what I've done here is the cement is, is uh, slightly raised in the center. Um, when the wound is that big it's sometimes a good idea to bring this um, the center point of the wound is slightly forward uh, because the um, so that the callus can roll over easier and that it's not going to end up being a flat surface uh, if it was a smaller wound uh, then i would probably just make it slightly concave um, because the 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 especially with the trident maple because the callus tends to be quite aggressive the callus formation although I am doing this at a time of year when the sap flow is a little bit uh, lower and uh, so I don't expect that extreme callus formation and now we'll just seal that area and as I said this is uh, uh, obviously to prevent uh, infection um, because the this is top gin sealer uh, and uh, it would have an added uh, plant uh, like a antiseptic or something uh, to it to prevent uh, um, infection but it's also to it makes a very uh, tight seal and this will seal in the moisture on that cambium and so you'll find that the cambium will start to roll over this area and then perhaps uh, well maybe it's sufficient just this uh, one time to expose the cambium for it to heal over um, but if not if it's too slow then what we can do is just come back again and maybe when there's still a little bit of a hole and activate the edge of the callus again and then it will continue to form. I've now completed the first styling of this trident maple um, so just a couple of comments um, in closing or in conclusion that I'd like to make. Um, it seemed like there was a number of areas where uh, branches were allowed to develop, uh, multiple branches were allowed to be developed at a single point and uh, that gave rise to some of these uh, sort of fists forming um, and uh, a very um, unappealing scars uh, that it healed over and um, so there wasn't really anything I could do with some of these uh, I had to simply cut them off um, for the most part uh, there were branches that I could cut back to the the entire canopy needed to be pulled in slightly in any way uh, so that worked very well I did I pruned out uh, I tried to reduce the coarse branches as much as I could and uh, so so now I've left these, uh, these sacrifice or whips uh, or escape branches, whatever you want to call them, um, on. Fortunately, we didn't prune them and uh, when we did the defoliation. And so now they can just uh, develop further and that sap flow will help to heal over the scars that have been created. Um, and they will also be useful for thickening up the girth of the branches. And uh, just like with any decision, tree you're constantly building the structure and uh, replacing some branches with other better positioned branches as you go along so there are some branches on this tree that I think will ultimately be removed in favor of better positioned uh, more slender branches uh, to promote better taper out to the to the outline of the tree or the silhouette of the tree um, and uh, some of the branches are also fairly uh, straight 
and uh, they are too thick to to be to put any curves in at this point in time uh, so for the moment I will keep them and then either change the direction of the branch by pruning to a different branch uh, um, or alternatively it would be yeah so just really replacing um, uh, there were a few, a few branches uh, this area here where I was able to bring the branches uh, change the angles slightly um, they were uh, in the frontal plane they were uh, crossing one another and um, so I just wanted to show this to you you can use uh, this wire almost becomes like a prop against the trunk of the tree in the past I would uh, wire this branch connecting it to something else but the uh, obviously then you've got wire crisscrossing the trunk and the in and and on, tr on a trunk that is of this size um, that really doesn't look very nice but you can actually use this technique which is very handy so if you're wanting to bend down you will put the wire to the top um, because then that prevents the, uh, the branch from going up and if you want to bend the branch up then you would put the wire to the bottom um, so uh, that's a very useful little uh, tip that I'm sure you can use um, what else uh, there were a few there was at the back of the tree uh, there was an attempt uh, there was a there's a, a sort of a, a bit of a void and um, a branch was brought uh, around from another branch and then um, in an effort to uh, make it appear because it was at the back of the tree to make it appear as though it is a branch growing out from that direction um, I didn't think that that was a good solution and I will just simply uh, approach graft uh, into that position should I think it's necessary to actually fill the space um, and one can just use these uh, one of these younger uh, um, branchlets to uh, to do that with uh, it's a, I feel it's a little bit late in the season to be doing that I would prefer to do that in late spring uh, when the tree is still quite vigorous um, approach grafting is obviously a great technique uh, for improving the structure increasing the, the the structural branches in these trees Trees. and uh, what's in as opposed to thread grafting which can only be done uh, before spring or right right uh, uh, at the beginning of spring before the buds are actually uh, popping um, thread grafting uh, it can only be done then but approach grafting can be done throughout the growing season so so long as there's sap flow you can do approach grafts and they're highly effective on tridents uh, particularly uh, there are one or two areas where um, I didn't have a choice as I showed you with that very thick um, uh, fisty kind of branch um, I had no option but to remove the entire branch so the stub uh, was kept as long as possible sealed and hopefully we can get some shoots coming out of the end of that I don't see why not uh, but if not there are shoots in the area that can be used to replace that branch this uh, wound also was filled uh, as I showed you and sealed over so that should heal over pretty quickly of course uh, some somebody else working on the same tree might have decided just to keep it there I believe it's an uro uh, you could keep that a uh, little bit of character however I felt um, that this tree had no other scarring on it other than that area and so I wanted to fill it and um, so I went ahead and did that and I would imagine that in a year or two to, uh, that would be calloused over so obviously um, uh, th this is the first time as I said that I work on this tree and it's been um, awesome working on this material it is fantastic to work on something with such great uh, character and such great potential and uh, <clears throat> excuse me obviously the 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 value of this tree lies predominantly in the trunk which is f f other than the scar that I showed you uh, now other than that one scar there there are no there are no other scars on this tree and um, that that increases the value of a tree uh, of this um, nature 
quite considerably. Um, the branches do need some further development, as I said, through in the girth of the base of those branches, just to make the, um, the transition from trunk to primary branches a little bit more sympathetic or a little bit smoother. Um, they do need to thicken up and um, and obviously I would like to increase the secondary branching further back on the tree so that by the time I get out to the outline of the tree that I will already have then tertiaries and then your fine network of branches so that you can have maximum ramification. So at the moment the structural work is, uh, is largely done, um, can be improved a little bit further and I will do that um, either through just uh, adventitious sort of budding um, uh, that the tree will give me as a result of its strength in spring um, and where I need it and I don't have I will uh, approach graft. Um, I have kept this uh, top section of the tree you'll see I didn't touch that so that's still fairly dense that hasn't been thinned out. Uh, I did that intentionally because in autumn uh, which would be in a few weeks or a month at the most um, would be an ideal time to do an air layering. I'm not convinced that the customer will be happy about having uh, a bag on the top of his tree for a few months uh, so I don't want to make that decision uh, to, to cut it off yet without first speaking to him about it uh, so we may either just remove it immediately or alternatively we will uh, do an air layering and then you can obviously get a little show hen um, as well as, as this one uh, two for the price of the one <laughs> so to speak. Um, so yeah uh, in conclusion a great uh, tree with phenomenal um, opportunity or uh, potential. I'm really excited about working on this tree in the coming years. I think it can be something quite phenomenal. It has also got great size uh, vertical height which means that you can make so much more of an impression uh, once you have achieved uh, a, a better degree of density branch density than what I currently have. Um, obviously the size also uh, gives you a larger canvas so you really can do so much more with it um, and it's also easier to manage the ramification uh, particularly in spring when you do have uh, the extension um, that these trees do typically give which is fairly strong. Um, it's easier to manage, the t manage that if the tree is bigger. If you have shohin or mommy size trees you really need to be on top of that because otherwise you can lose your ramification very very easily and have to prune it all out and start again because the branches become too coarse too quickly. Uh, I think I've said everything that I need to say. Um, you're welcome to leave your comments or I'd encourage you to leave your comments and questions below and I um, hope you've enjoyed it. hope you've uh, picked up something that is useful to you. So until next time, uh, thank you very much and uh, if you haven't subscribed uh, please do so now and you'll be notified when uh, I release new videos which uh, is so far I'm sticking to my commitment of one a week every Friday. So I hope to see you next Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.